George recently was very open that the Game of Thrones TV show and other projects he's been doing over the years was really distracting to finishing A Song of Ice and Fire. And also, he revealed his publishing schedule for his books, which is interesting. It's not in the order you think it would be in. Real quick, if you enjoy my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon with your donation. Not only do you help this channel, but you also get early access to videos, videos, and podcasts that no one else does besides those that support me on Patreon, access to all my book clubs, and my Facebook-only Patreon group page. Link in the video description and comment section down below. There are a lot of people not happy that Winds of Winter isn't out yet. George is one of those people. He's been berating himself and saying, yeah, I'm really upset with myself. I understand why people are angry. So it's nice that he's aware that people are agitated. And it's nice that he himself feels agitated and angry at himself about it. Now, I, I don't agree with giving death threats to an elderly man. And I think those people need... Probably some help, <laughs> but being upset or wanting the books done is understandable. Going beyond that's where it gets a little stupid. So George recently admitted that, yeah, the success of the show and the books kind of made it hard for him to concentrate on the winds of winter. So he admitted, the success of the series and the books and the TV show has gotten me a lot of invitations. A lot of people know who I am, especially four, five, six years ago, maybe I said yes to too many of those things. It made it hard to concentrate on the books. I'm trying to cut down on invitations I'm taking, precisely to finish Winds of Winter. I need to get back to my writing room and put the rest of the world, the real world aside, and just live in Westeros. The real world is full of distractions. I have to put it aside. It's hard to balance to live in the real world for a few hours a day, then go into Westeros. While this is something people have known for a while, the millions of projects and events he has going on has made it hard for him to finish the series. Honestly, if I were to choose between George having these experiences and the success and being able to meet all these people, or A Song of Ice and Fire being finished, winds and spring, I'd pick for George to have those experiences. I'm really happy for him, and I don't know, after following this guy for getting close to two decades, it's it's nice to see him happy and having all those great experiences, and it's nice now that he wants to really get the at least wins done. As for cutting down on people inviting him to do things and cutting back on his obligations besides on wins, George has been doing this for years. I'm not trying to say that he's not doing a better job now, but for years now, he has even stepped away from the show and certain responsibilities he had with it, or rather things he did for it. And it, it didn't really help that much, so... I understand him saying, okay, I, I need to concentrate more on wins, but at the same time, you've been saying that and cutting back on stuff for a while now. Also, George recently got a lot of stuff greenlit, and he even talked about how he has a million deals all over the place for different types of shows, so I feel like he's saying... <laughs> I'm gonna cut back on it, but at the same time, he just got offered so many things recently, so how how can he, you know? Personally, I do understand from the writing aspect, I really do have to be immersed when I do a lot of writing, and it is very hard to get up, walk away, do something else, and come back, so I do understand where he's coming from, where he can't go do an event for five hours and then come home and work on wins. He needs to just spend all day locked away working. So that's for George to figure out how exactly he's going to do that. I know a few months ago he said he had secluded himself in his writing room and then all of a sudden he's back out places again. So I don't know. However, you should know that George is very, very thankful for fans. I mean, he's said this a million times, but recently he reiterated it. And George went on to just say how thankful he is for fans and that, you know, while it is lonely writing these books, that, 
your guys' support means a ton to him. And it really does. If you think it doesn't, it, it does make a big difference. Following this guy, again, for <laughs> getting close to two decades, I have a person that supports me on Patreon that hates when I say how long ago I started reading the books because I'm not supposed to say it, so. Now I say close to two decades. I don't give the exact number because, I don't know. I don't know why people tell me not to do the things I do. But anyways, when George was getting a lot of hate for not finishing wins, you could see him freaking out with how he was interacting and the way he just was acting in general. And then when all of a sudden people started pouring love on him and saying, don't listen to the people saying hateful things, don't listen to the people saying death threats to an elderly man, just, we love you, we support you, you, you do the best story you can. And I think that also helped with how the show ended. Now people, instead of being like, fuck you, George, the show's ending, I have that ending, I don't need you, they're going, oh, fuck, yeah, yeah that, his books are gonna be better and better explain everything that went on. So he probably has a lot of pressure from that off, which he also admitted the show being done actually took off a bunch of pressure. But where I was getting to, because I love to ramble, really sorry, is that when we had this outpouring of love, you saw an upswing in his writing, in him being kinder, in him thanking people, in him actually being open and honest, because George does not do well with pressure. If you follow George, you know this. Pressure is not good for him. It causes him to just completely shut down. So people think, oh, we're lighting a fire under his ass by telling him we're not going to give you another penny of our money or we're done with you. It, it doesn't. You're, you're not actually helping him at all. And maybe that's your thing. I don't know. I don't know you. I don't know your, your deal. I do think it has been eye-opening for him recently, too, because people have been thanking him for jobs like tourism and costume creating and all that. George sees that he, he does have a big impact on the world and he has helped a lot of people. And I think that's something that we need to keep reminding him of. Now, <laughs> let's talk about George's uh, story release schedule, which may get some people in a tizzy and I was actually surprised about, but let me share the schedule with you real quick and then you can, you know. Tell me what you think and I'll tell you what I think. I'll probably tell you first before you tell me, just because I'm recording this right now. So the release schedule is going to be The Winds of Winter. After that is published, Duncan Egg, Story 4, then A Dream of Spring, then Duncan Egg 5, then Fire and Blood 2. The Winds of Winter being next isn't surprising because he already said months, months, months ago, The Winds of Winter is my priority right now. But the fact that he's then going to do a Duncan Egg story... A little surprising that he's not jumping right into A Dream of Spring because as he's admitted, he's better when he's immersed into the world and the longer time from him finishing Winds of Winter to A Dream of Spring makes it harder and harder for him to be immersed in that world. On the other hand, I know he absolutely loves Dunkin' Egg. I know he has so many stories he wants to write for it. I love Dunkin' Egg stories, so I'm all for it. And they're also shorter stories, so... He'll probably write it fairly quickly. Now, what is shocking to me is not the a dream of spring coming after the Duncan Egg story, but the fact that he's going to do another Duncan Egg story after a dream of spring and then go to Fire and Blood Volume 2. It's just a little shocking because he already talked about how much material he wrote for A World of Ice and Fire and how he just had too much on the Targaryens. So most of this was already written and he was just filling in more blanks. So the fact that Fire and Blood is pushed off to the very end, Volume 2, man, that's a long ways away. I didn't think Volume 2 was going to be that far away. I was thinking, oh, maybe after Winds of Winter, he then maybe quickly wraps up Volume 2, adds a little bit to it. But the fact that it's at the very end is not good. I don't think we're going to see <laughs> Volume 2 in the next decade. Damn. Let's end on some lighter notes, though. George admitted that he stole the map of Ireland for Westeros, that Balerion the Black Dread is his favorite, A Song of Ice and Fire Dragon, and that his favorite sword is Dawn. And I will never, ever, ever forgive you, HBO, D&D, for what you did to Dawn in the show. I'll take that hate to my grave. 
Actually, I'm, I don't want to be buried, so I'll take it to my cremation. Oh, and George is very confident at this point that they are going to call the prequel show Blood Moon, but he's still holding out for it to be called The Long Night or The Longest Night. George, I hope you get your wish because Blood Moon kind of sucks. All right, so that's your George R.R. R. Martin update. I'm happy for the guy. I'm a little shocked at his publishing schedule, but you know, dude's gonna do what the dude's gotta do and it's his life and it's his world. Go for it. I support you, dude. So like, subscribe, and come back for more videos. Bye.